Thomas A. Edison, the inventor of the phonograph, has never before permitted his voice to be recorded for the public. Today, however, he has a message for you. Thomas Edison's Navy Lab will change the world forever. Read all about it. Can I offer you a glimpse of the future? Is this what the world will look like a hundred years from now? And are using your inventions, the progress that you have made. It was a very unique place. It was started in 1923 as a place where government could do research that uh, was military related to protect the platforms of the Navy. Well, basic research is the key and foundation of NRL, and it's the foundation of all science. Thomas Edison made the point that the nation needed a scientific organization, a laboratory that would ensure that the U.S. was never caught off guard by science and technology innovations. And out of that ultimately came the establishment of the Naval Research Lab. Because of the processes of invention, invention for the brief span of 30 odd years, the world has seen an inventor's dream first materialized by the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk. There's a long list of firsts in terms of technology development that were born here and then transitioned out. Sonar was invented here. Radar was first patented here. In fact, the phenomenology of radar was discovered right here on the Potomac River. We launched the first Navy spacecraft. Vanguard was designed, built, and launched here at NRL. Well, for the past 80 years, the, the laboratory has been tasked with uh, protecting the Navy of the future. We spend a lot of time um, teaching um, new hires, especially our history, to make sure that they understand and appreciate that, um, working very hard to document that history because we're proud of it. Well, the history really roots the scientists. The innovative ideas that Edison had and the way he thought of things, and a lot of these young scientists, they track their roots all the way back there. The Naval Research Laboratory is not only all over the United States, we're global as well as well out into our solar system. We start with basic scientific ideas and end up with products in the fleet that are making a difference every day and saving lives. The basic premise of NRL is to do basic and applied research to move the frontier of science forward. What we are able to do here at the Naval Research Laboratory is do fundamental studies on basic science the research itself does the talking. The applications here can touch the world. They can touch the entire globe. This is an anthropomorphic robot, and as you can see, it actually has a lot of facial features. And the arms actually have a range of motion that is very similar to a human's range of motion. Really what we're trying to do is uh, create systems that are smarter and work better with humans. Tactical electronic warfare is responsible for looking at concepts, uh, both hardware and software, used to protect our ships and aircraft uh, in, in the Navy uh, from electronic attack. The role of UAVs is to do those missions that are too dull, dirty, or dangerous uh, for manned missions. CTAS was developed to model chemical, biological, radiological plumes, particularly for urban environments. If you're dealing with a real terrorist attack, you have minutes, maybe. But not only we can provide speed, but accuracy at the same time, and this is something which no other tool can do. What we're working on now in our group is fuel cell unmanned air vehicles. I think the Department of Defense has a unique uh, energy requirement um, that can't really be met in the commercial sector. Well, one of the things we're looking at are photovoltaics, uh, looking at low cost, uh, cheap, easy to produce power sources. Nice and gentle. The advantages to having a scale model is that we can control the design parameters in a laboratory environment. Corrosion is one of the biggest costs to the Navy. The more we can reduce the cost of maintenance and corrosion, the more money there is available for the fleet.
This is really the only full-scale fire test ship. There's really nothing more important that I think you could do in the Navy. We take on the whole realm of damage control. We want to enable the, the Navy to make decisions based on what the ocean environment is and what they expect the ocean environment to be in the future. The U.S. Navy has a global mission, so we have to have a, a global model to support. We predict ocean weather just like the meteorologists predict atmospheric weather. Finally, we're completing the circle between theory, experiment, and modeling. If you have assets up in space, you really want to know what the weather is around those as well. The Navy actually has a lot of assets in outer space, uh, communication satellites, weather satellites. We're on the leading edge of work in uh, space robotics, the ability to automate and really relieve humans of the burden and responsibility of you know, risking their lives. Chemists build things from the bottom up, starting with molecules to build simple structures. Really what nanoscience is about is trying to engineer materials by controlling their structure at a molecular level. Okay, we're going to take off out of PAX and we're just going to head into 4006. We're going to try to get you as high as we can right off the bat and do some radar work there. We're the military liaison, if you would, to the scientists. These P3s really serve as a roll-on, roll-off research test bed, which is just invaluable for the Navy. How about GPS? GPS was created by NRL and was tested on these aircraft. And now look, they're in our cars. They allow us to be able to find our people in combat. It may be a part of the evolution in making sure that the technology can go out and support the warfighters directly. Working on flight experiments is about as exciting as you can get in research. Uh, there's nothing like seeing your experiment take off on a big rocket. To see our own research product to be put in operations, that's the most satisfying part. We have some of the very best people in the world putting their minds to work on basic research, applied research, and solving problems for the Navy. To be a, an active scientist at NRL, you really have to be breaking new ground. When I tell people about what I do and they are so surprised and shocked is when it actually hits home that I'm part of something much bigger and that I'm actually doing something that's going to make a difference in the world. What I really like is the thrill of discovery, you know, seeing something that nobody has seen before making a measurement that nobody has been able to make before. I mean, that's one of the fun things about working at NRL is you're walking down the hall and you're making a joke and the next thing you know it's a name on an airplane and then it's in a press release. <laughs> I'd like to think that when I retire I have a robot there to help take care of me. I love working at NRL. I think for me, I'd, I can't imagine a better employer. Look at that. That is some beautiful turbulence right there. See the rotation, the vorticity, the coherent structure, that's just gorgeous. This is what I study. This is why I come to work. It's a full, a rich, a useful life is sought. Science can do that also. Many of our young scientists come to the laboratory because it's one of the very few places where they can shape their own careers, develop their own research interests, and see that applied to make a difference in the world today. If we want to continue leading the world in technology development, we have to continue doing basic research, which will keep us on track for being the lead in technology development around the world. I do look at the NRL as the defenders of basic research in DOD. We help fix the problems of today, but we're really focused on the Navy after next. Knowing that Thomas Edison stood up the laboratories is extremely important in regards to our history. And I think that you're gonna find that throughout the Navy, uh, sailors and uh, or the other DOD services are proud of their heritage. We still perform hands-on, basic, fundamental bench science. It's science that can change the way we live. The inevitable will never happen, but the unexpected will. Hey, 
however, he has a message for you that is important enough. I'm going to be a famous scientist too one day. This is uh, Adam speaking.